Psh, 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 psh. What's up, guys? This is Papi Shulo. Thank you for tuning in. I already released this video, but it was ASMR. There was no music. It was just the sound of the project taking place. I find that I am enjoying watching videos like that, so I decided to release it like that. But that's not typical for my channel. My channel has commentary, so this one is going to be the same video except with commentary. Now what I'm doing here is magically inserting the shoe last, the size 11 shoe last into the Jason SB Dunk. I am super magical and um, it's uh, pretty cool to be me. I am going to release a video soon, uh, an updated video on DIY sneaker cleaner. And I have to tell you, the best sneaker cleaner that I have found is probably in your house right now. And it's not called a sneaker cleaner. I start with a thousand grit sandpaper to deglaze. That is the uh, softest grit that is still considered a grit that removes instead of polishes. Here's my lint shaver. I saw my frenemies, the black sock lint on the back of the tongue and, and I just can't. I can't with the black sock lint. Small thread fades especially on the tongue tag there that are a little too small to just clip. Uh, burn them, burn them off, be nice and careful. Uh, don't do it for too long. Uh, if you see some brown marks, they can scratch right off if you left it on there for too long, but it makes those frays just gone. It makes the thread look nice and tight. Initially, my paint mix was just white paint, Angelus and some duller but that turned out to be a little too bright. So I added a drop, Did it, was it a one drop or two drops of cream? Let me see, one, okay, one. Yeah, and it, it ended up being absolutely perfect. I always add duller to any paint that I do on a shoe. Shout out to the Jesus Custom uh, channel. He's the one that put me onto that and it really does provide a factory looking finish instead of a shoe that has been painted. You don't want the shoe to look like it's been painted. You want it to look factory. And Dollar really helps in providing that illusion. The bottle says to add 8% of Dollar to your paint mix. Obviously, you're not going to be weighing it out and being that specific. But I never put more than a drop, especially for something that small. You just have to kind of gauge what a little less than 10% of your paint mix is should have duller in it. Color matching can be such a mystery, but hopefully this can help you out with what you need to paint match for that bloody red Jason Voorhees SB color. I had mostly red and then I mixed some Varsity. Now, Varsity is a mixed color. It's pre-mixed. You don't need Varsity, but if you have it, I think it'd be a lot easier. And then I used purple, and then there was some blue that I added in there. Now, I did my mix with mostly red and just kept trying out these different colors until I was like, okay, it's too purple. Okay, it's, it's a little too blue. Okay, it's a little too red. And I just kept kind of dropping paint by paint until I finally got the color right. Uh, obviously, that's not a scientific method. I can't give you like specific drops of each one, but I can tell you that I am confident that I matched the color. And now we have a very bad setup for one of the worst camera tricks performed on YouTube of all time. But I was having a little fun with it because I got to print out these little decals on my Cricut machine and I wanted to show them off somehow. So I decided to, you know, do something spooky. I know this is silly, but I did put the paint, the actual paint match on the top of the cap there. That is the paint match color. I experimented with different ways to apply this. One was uh, just 
sort of mixing half and half water and sort of smearing it on with the paintbrush to see if it just kind of looked like splattery, but it didn't look right. The best method that I came up with after trying several was something that you learn in kindergarten. You learned it in preschool. You learned it before kindergarten and that's finger painting. And another thing that you learned in preschool and kindergarten is the first time that you got arrested, you had to get your fingerprints taken. So that's why I use the foam pad. The foam pad holds the, the paint very well. And then I just kind of squish my finger in the foam pad the same way that the policeman did to me when I was in kindergarten. And I am smearing it on there with my finger. What happens here is that the paint doesn't get into those cracks and creases quite as well. And that's good. You want to see those cracks and creases contrasted from the, the red. And if you see a spot that you think might be a little too dark, you can spread it with water. Just get some water and a paintbrush and spread it out and then let it dry. And then you can even try again with your finger, but it's no big deal, really. And if you found that the cracks probably had a little too much red in them, you can use a brass brush to kind of scratch the red out of those cracks. It's really subjective as to how you think the final product should look. You could use an eraser, just a regular pencil eraser if you think there's a spot that's too dark. You could also use a glue eraser like I did just there. This is where restoration and art combine. You have to decide what the midpoint is between what the DS shoe looks like, which is rich red, and a worn shoe, which looks like this, where it's white and dirty. And this is what I went with. I went with something that looks like a darker red, a richer red, a less worn red, but I didn't totally cover everything up to make it look like as DS as possible. I still needed it to look natural, like it naturally faded to this point versus the point before. And touching up the white was probably the easiest part of this whole job and it really made a big difference in the final product. And here's the before and after, both lateral sides. I feel like the lateral sides on this particular shoe were the most worn, so it gave it the most dramatic effect for before and after. You can see this picture on my Instagram. Please don't forget to follow my Instagram. Like and subscribe this video, uh, follow me on TikTok, and I'll see you on the next one.